How are you, Magnese? Good day to you. Thanks for tuning in for another edition of Inside Magnese. I am Steve Corbin. And I'm Corey Grineisen. Our top story today is that Lashinta Rounds qualified for the 2014 Men's and Women's NCAA Track and Field Nationals. She's the first athlete to qualify for McNeese since 2005. Wow. Also, the drum majors for the 2014 Pride of McNeese Cowboy Marching Band have been selected. There are Matthew Duplantis, Lena Perry, and Austin Ballard. Congratulations to those guys. That's pretty good. This week at McNeese, we celebrated Multicultural Week. The week was filled with all sorts of events, and I was fortunate enough to be able to take part in some of the festivities. For the week of May 10th through the 14th, it's International Week here on McNeese campus. There's events ranging from soccer games to a parade of nations, and today you're able to sample food from around the world. All the international students here at McNeese have decided to come together for one day to give you a taste of their country. This event is Taste the Nations and Table Display Competition. It's part of Multicultural Week of Spring 2014 at McNeese State. Um, what we're doing here is we're having a variety of foods that students can taste for free. And we also have a table competition between different organizations on campus and even students can compete. We have the Vietnamese Association represented. Uh, we have Nepal represented, Colombia, Ecuador. We also have the Cajun culture represented as well as the table from the NAACP and Chi Alpha and they're just there displaying their cultures and there's even a grand prize of $150. There are plenty of multicultural events going on this week. Monday we actually had a parade of nations which kicks off every multicultural week. The students were able to walk around the quad holding up various flags from different nations. Today is the table display and taste the nations and to, we also have a little world cup event that's going to be today at one o'clock in the rec and that's when students in the soccer that's in part with the soccer club so students can come out and play soccer as you know this year is the world cup it's going to be in brazil so we kind of themed our whole entire multicultural week um after the world cup so we have the little world cup that's going to be tonight and also with the championship for that uh, competition tomorrow which is Wednesday and then Thursday we're going to end off Multicultural Week with an awards banquet which features the poet the Asia Project and he's really good with what he does. Okay the mission statement of us is to foster students that will promote multicultural awareness and multicultural diversity in Magnesia's campus to Magnesia's students. The multicultural office uh, is an organization paid by student funds. So whenever the students pay their tuition, a portion of their fees come to us. And we plan several events throughout the semester for cultural awareness and cultural diversity on Magnus. As we know, Magnus is a really, really diverse campus and they need to have a voice. There was a lot of interesting cultures there and a lot of great food. I had a really good time at the multicultural festivities this week. Now, as I understand it, uh, I do believe you have a follow-up interview with Adam Harris from yes. our last episode? Yes, uh, Adam Harris is here to explain to us just what happened at the city council me meeting and give us a little follow-up on EC Rich. Well, Steve, uh, the city council meeting, they had quite a few people that showed up uh, in opposition of the ban for e-cigarettes. And Councilman Dana Jackson said that uh, another council member had asked him to delay the vote for 60 days. And he said that if you were there for the e-cigarettes, uh, that he apologized, uh, but that you could uh, uh, come back in 60 days. The interesting part about that was the majority of the room got up and just completely walked out. Wow. Uh, so they had, a, uh, they had quite the opposition there. Ken Levingston said that Dana Jackson saw the opposition and got the fear of God in his eyes. <laughs> so uh, it, was a, it was an interesting thing, but we'll see what happens uh, now in, a, in another about 40 days from now. Okay. And uh, why are some businesses banning e-cigarettes? Well, I did speak to a doctor's office uh, recently, a doctor at the eye clinic, and they told me that they had an incident where a customer was actually in there with an e-cigarette and was, was puffing, causing big clouds of smoke, so much that it was enveloping the, not, not only them, but the two people beside her. And, and she walked through, as she walked through the waiting room, she walked through the cloud and she smelled it. Immediately she said she realized it was not a cigarette and thought it was an e-cigarette, but also noticed that the two people sitting beside the person who was smoking like that, they had got up and left. So it's really a matter of courtesy. Uh, if, you know, if you're smoking something, you blow it in people's faces, it's offensive. And so she has instituted a policy at their office that you cannot smoke in the waiting room. 
And she said, but that's not that odd. We don't allow people to eat in the waiting room either for the same reasons, because sometimes uh, people's behavior offends other people, and, and we're just trying to uh, keep that down to a minimum. Right, right. Now, now tell us, what, what, what about the situation of students smoking tobacco cigarettes on campus? Well, that was an interesting uh, Senate meeting. Uh, it, it, it went a little bit long, but what wound up happening was the student senators decided they was going to put the vote back into the hands of the student. Instead of voting, in other words, instead of the senators voting for all the peers, they're going to allow the student body to vote individually. The same way that we do for student government elections on Moodle, uh, that type of thing, so that all the students get a chance to vote. They're going to have that a little bit later this semester. The actual date is not set, but uh, as soon as it comes out, we'll let you know. Okay, thank you so much, Adam Harris. Appreciate you. No problem. Thank you, Adam, for that update. I'm now here with Levi, our sports correspondent, who followed our men's and win women's basketball team this week. So you were at, out at uh, a couple of the games this week as they prepared for the Southland Conference Tournament, right? Uh, yes, I was, Corey. Okay, how did those games seem to go? Uh, the two games I went to went well. They won all of them, so it went pretty good. Well, yeah. that's good, because I know we had had some trouble in the previous games of finishing in the last couple of minutes. But did you see those troubles starting to end as they head into the conference tournament? Uh, yes, I did. The game against, uh, especially the men's against Abilene Christian, they actually came from behind and forced overtime and then won the game in overtime. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to see that that's improving. So let's go ahead and see what the men's and women's basketball team are up to. McNeese basketball season is drawing to a close. Both teams qualified for the Southland Conference Tournament in Katy, Texas. Women's basketball will be the seventh seed in the tournament after a 10-8 conference record. Men's basketball will also be the seventh seed in the tournament after a 9-9 conference record. I caught up with the coaches to talk about their tournament chances and next season. We feel really good about it. I mean, we feel uh, like we're in a good position. We're excited about going to Katy, and uh, we've had some recent tradition in, in Katy, Texas at the Southland Conference Tournament, and really looking forward to, to going back and feel like, you know, we don't know where we're going to be yet. We don't know what seed, and we certainly don't know what matchups we have yet, but we feel like we can play with anybody in the league. Well, I mean, you know, I, th I think we have a lot of strengths. I really do. I think we've got a, we've got some really young guards. You know, we've got a good backcourt. And uh, Jalen Johnson, our starting point guard, is a sophomore. Allison Baggett, our leading scorer, is a sophomore. And we've got a slew of freshman guards, and we're excited about – carrying on to the next season with those guys and and uh, working with them in off season and and having them for several years. I mean, that's exciting to have such a young backcourt. Uh, but as a team, I mean, we certainly uh, have a lot of strengths, I think, rebounding the basketball and, and doing some good things with, with just our toughness. And, and uh, our defense has become a strength as of late, which is why we've had success. And we certainly want to carry that on to next season. That's a present time, you know, in the conference tournament. It's, it's a tight race. Uh, uh, number one seed has been established by Stephen F. Austin. But the other uh, seeds are still up for grabs. And I think anybody from two to eight is cap capable of winning the tournament. So I like our chances. The biggest improvement, I think, uh, as a basketball team is uh, as far as young men, understanding the commitment the total commitment to be good and uh, sacrifice a lot of things beyond outside of basketball to have a good team. So uh, I look for that. I look for leadership. Uh, I think we got a good group coming back for seniors. Seniors, My junior class is a very strong class. Our nightlife correspondents headed out this weekend to Threetopia for this week of Magnese After Dark. Um, Threetopia uh, is a name my mother came up with. First came with the, uh, the number three. We Googled that number and we found a lot of fun uh, things or games or movies or people with the number three, as in the Three Students, the Three Little Pigs, the Three Amigos. And the Topia part comes from Utopia, which, and it, which means an experience or heaven. So when you come to our place, you know, it's an experience or heaven. So Three Topia was born from that right there. Vacation, um, it was great for us three or four years ago looking for a site to have our restaurant, Zeus. Um, it's, Across from the mall, right by the 210 Loop, uh, great location, lots of traffic. We are uh, excited about the location. When we first came here, it was nothing in here, so we got to build it out exactly where we wanted, uh, restaurants, and then came onto this side and have the, the bar side. So the location is fabulous. It's right in the middle of town, um, not far from the casino and not far from all the other bars in town. Well, awesome. when we come to Threetopia, we like to cater to everyone. 
uh, in our town is kind of limited of what you can do. Um, in, our, in our facilities, there's no smoking. It's very clean, upscale, kind of big city feel. Uh, we have uh, special events like speed dating, which is a lot of fun. We have live music, we have DJs. We also have gamer nights, where gamers can come in and compete against each other in Madden football, our Smash Brothers. Um, also, we do, we have movie nights, which are really great, 80s, 80s movie night, or whatever's on TV, like Game of Thrones. So again, there's something for everybody to come in, food specials, we have uh, great drinks selections, we stay open late if we need to be, uh, private parties, we have booths as well, we can have a private party, birthday parties, uh, VIP booth is fun as well, so it's got something for everybody. Closing us out tonight, we know that the Lake Charles area recently celebrated Mardi Gras. One of the biggest things people start to look for around this season is where to find the best king cake. Here at McNeese, we decided to ask around a little bit who McNeese students think has the best king cake in town. We picked the three most commonly picked locations that sell them and then engaged in a very serious, very professional, critical evaluation of the process. Yeah, we ate a bunch of king cake. Turned down for what? <laughs> So at least in the eyes of Inside McNeese, delicious donuts wins. Hopefully this will help you out next year's Mardi Gras if you find yourself with that little plastic baby and having to pay for the next king cake. That would just about do it for us here on Inside McNeese. Please remember to check us out on social media and feel free to let us know whatever you think about the show or what you would possibly like to see on the next show. Until next time, everyone, I'm Steve Corbin. And I'm Corey Greineisen. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching Inside McNeese. McNeese.